Today we'll be comparing the Louis Vuitton Turenne bag to the Louis Vuitton Trevi bag. How have I not done this video sooner? Because these things have so much in common, but there's also a lot different about them too. Stay tuned to find out which one I would recommend over the other. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community posts on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. The Louis Vuitton Turenne bag and the Louis Vuitton Trevi bag, two of my favorite bags in my collection. This one has sentimental value because it was a gift from Paul. And this one also has sentimental value because it was kind of my first Louis Vuitton bag. And I think it's one of the most beautiful bags that Louis Vuitton has ever designed or, you know, the designers at Louis Vuitton because Louis himself is not around anymore. Both bags are currently discontinued and I assume they always will be at this point, but you can get them pretty easily on the pre-loved market. They're not that difficult to find. The Trevi was released first. It came in two sizes, the PM, which is what this is, and the GM, which was actually my first Louis Vuitton bag. And I have several videos explaining why I sold that and why I ended up with the PM instead. I definitely prefer the PM size over the GM. The GM basically is heavier and bulkier and I felt like I was carrying a piece of luggage every time I got it out. It was just too much. The PM is so much better for me. I believe this bag retailed for around $2,400 when it was new. And that would have been around the mid 2010s or so. Both of these bags only came in canvas. This one primarily you'll find in the Damier Ben because that was the only one officially released, but I have also seen it in Monogram and even in Damier Azur, both of which are very difficult to find, especially the Azur, because those pieces were only made as special orders. They were not in stores, not released to the public. The Turenne was released in the late 2010s. It came in three sizes, the PM, actually four sizes, the PM, the MM, and the GM, and then there was also a nano size of the Turenne bag. This was only released in monogram canvas, and it has since been replaced by the Rivoli. If you look at the Turenne next to the Rivoli, you can see some resemblance there. Why compare these two bags? I think there's a lot that's similar about them. The size is one of those. This is the MM, by the way, if I didn't mention that, and I think it's pretty comparable in size to the PM Turenne. The thing that probably drew me to each of these bags the most is the pleating on the front. The Turenne also has pleating on the sides. So here you have pleating here, and then the back is the same with the pleating. And then you also have pleats on the ends there. On the Turenne, very similar front and back, you have two pleats on the front and then two pleats on the back. And I'm just kind of a sucker for pleats. Something about them just draws me in. They both feel feminine to me. Both bags have some structure and some slouch. I think both bags are just really pretty. They're both also more narrow at the top and wider at the base. And they both have two top handles as well as a removable strap. The Trevi has this removable shoulder strap it is slightly adjustable, but it's not going to be longer than a shoulder bag. You won't be able to put this cross body, for example. However, since that strap is removable, you can take it off and you can add an Aben strap from Dress Up Your Purse. I will have them linked below. So if you want to turn this into a crossbody bag, you absolutely can. There you go. The strap that comes with the Trevi has four adjustments on both sides of the strap. And I have it on the longest length right now, so that's all you're getting there, unless you add a third-party strap. The strap that comes with the Turin is quite a bit longer. It's Vachetta, since you have a monogram bag with Vachetta trim. And this strap is intended for you to wear the Turin crossbody. I have it on the longest length right now. And if you adjust it to the shortest length, you can wear it more easily as a shoulder bag. However, you'll see it's still pretty long for a shoulder bag. It still hits down at the hip. Here's the shortest length crossbody. That's also comfortable. And of course, if you want a shorter strap, you can again head over to dress up your purse and grab a Vachetta strap in the length that you desire. So here's one that fits really well on my shoulder. This is a non-adjustable strap. It's just one length. And there are many options. Here's one more. This one is a fairly new strap. It has two snaps at the end, and it's like the strap that comes on the Neo Noe. This strap adjusts to two lengths. 
The shortest is the same length as the one that I just showed you. So there it is as a shoulder bag. There you go. Or you can adjust it to the longest length, which is right here. And that's one of the great things about places like Dress Up Your Purse where you can get third party straps is since these bags are only available in the pre-loved market, sometimes they don't come with the straps. So know that you can still get a strap if yours doesn't come with one. Maybe you find a fantastic deal on a bag that doesn't have a strap and you save many hundreds of dollars. These straps don't cost many hundreds of dollars. So that's one way you can save money on these bags. Or even if you find one that does have the strap, you can change the straps to get different lengths or different looks. More versatility for these very expensive bags is always a good thing. Here's a quick mod shot comparison of the two bags with their original straps. The Trevi with the shoulder strap, the Turen with the crossbody strap. Here's how they look from the side. Now let's take a look at the exteriors of these bags. They have similarities, but also differences. The Turan is made up of several pieces of canvas. You have this one piece across the top. You have this one bigger piece across the front that has the pleats. You have the same on the back. And then on the sides, you have another piece on each side that makes up the pleat on the side. And then there's another piece on the bottom, which has some structure to it, and you have four feet. The bulk of this bag and the capacity of the bag is going to be in this bottom wider area. This top area when I've used the bag is really kind of useless. You have to keep that part pretty empty unless you've got something small and thin there so that it will zip properly and not get wavy and too bulky. Most of this bag is coated canvas but you have quite a bit of trim on this bag, much more than on the Turin. The Trevi has the Aben leather trim across the top here and that goes along the sides as well. You also have leather piping on each of the sides very similar to the speedy bag you have the leather strap of course and the leather handles and the leather chaps and right along here where the two pieces of canvas meet at the seam there's a little bit of a leather trim there as well and I love those little details there is less leather on the Turin bag you do have the handles of course the chaps and the strap that go with it. You also have this little tab here that says Louis Vuitton Paris. You do have piping, but it's one piece on each end. The canvas is one big piece on the front and one big piece on the back. There's not a separate piece on the bottom. It's just two pieces manipulated and folded and sewn together. And there are no feet on the Turin bag. There are also no outside pockets on either of these. You also have leather on the zipper pull here and on these two sides, these little pieces, right under where you attach the strap. You do have leather pieces in the same place on the Trevi, but these are completely sewn down like the chaps are, whereas these leather pieces are only sewn at the top and then they're not sewn at the bottom. Now that's one of the things that I don't like about this bag, especially over time if you're not careful how you store this. These leather pieces tend to curl out, which in my opinion is not the very best look. Both bags have gold-toned hardware. I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that the Trevi still has actual brass hardware, whereas the Turin has the gold-toned hardware that's not solid brass. The zipper pull on the Trevi is all metal. You have a nice thick zipper here. This zipper is not buttery smooth, nor was the one on my GM. It's a big zipper, it's hardy, and it's gonna keep your bag secure. You can always butter that up, make it a little smoother by adding wax paper to it, but that is something to expect from the Trevi zipper. You also have hardware attaching the handle to each chap so four little squares there and you have these little brass buttons that say Louis Vuitton on each of the four chaps very big D rings on the end where you can attach the strap and the hooks on the strap are snap hooks and they have LV engraved in them there's also a little brass button on each of the chaps at either end. Here's one little issue that I've had with this bag. It's doing it right now. Can you see how the zipper is gone through the D-ring? It sometimes gets stuck in there. So you have to put the strap down in order to get the zipper pull to pull it. That happens often. The hardware on the Turin, you have a little square gold toned piece connecting each handle to each chap, just like on the Trevi. You also have a D-ring on either side to attach the shoulder strap. This zipper is pretty buttery smooth. I could probably wax this one up. It's not as smooth as it used to be, but it's pretty smooth. And then on the little tab where it says Louis Vuitton, there are two little gold buttons, but these are flat 
whereas the ones on the Trevi are domed. Oh, and I already mentioned the feet, but that's the other hardware on the Trevi. I love bags that have that little metal piece that attaches the handle to the chap because that is the perfect place to put bag charms. That's one thing I love about these is it's easy to attach a bag charm to the front of the bag. And you can do one that hangs from a single hook like this or something like this Florida de monogram charm, which hangs from both sides. I will show you something that's different about the hardware that makes it a little bit more difficult to attach a bag charm to the Turin. Notice how big and wide these pieces of metal are here. It gives you a lot of space to attach a bag charm. But notice you don't have as much space on the Turin, so this kind of barely fits through and I have been worried before about leaving marks on the Vachetta or scratching the Vachetta. Fortunately that's never happened, it's just wide enough that that fits well. But it is something to be aware of if you enjoy wearing bag charms on your bags. If you didn't want to put bag charms there, you always have those D-rings on the end and you could attach a bag charm there. The Trevi is a more structured bag than the Turin. Because of that structured base at the bottom and because the front of the bag or the bulkier part of the bag is made of four different pieces of leather, so you kind of have corners built in. Whereas the Turin is made of two pieces, I said leather, I meant canvas, two pieces of canvas. It doesn't have structure built into the sides in the same way, but it still does have some structure. You can see the corners are folded and sewn so that you do have actual corners here and that helps it give structure. So the Turin ends up being more malleable, flexible, a little bit slouchier than the Trevi. Definitely not anywhere near as slouchy as the Speedy can be. Due to the way these are constructed, the Trevi holds its overall shape very well. This is a pretty highly structured bag. I will say with my GM, I had trouble with the pleats being malformed. A lot of that has to do with the way you store it and the way you wear it. So if you're constantly wearing it on your shoulder and you're mashing your arm into it, that can change the structure of the bag. Or if you have it stored where it's sitting like this, and the handle is pulling down on the sides, it adds a little bit of weight. Gravity is sinking the bag in on itself, and these handles are down, they can press on the pleats, all of that can cause the bag to become misshapen over time. The way I store this bag is hanging it by the two top handles. I do keep the shoulder strap attached to it, but I'm careful when I put it away about where it lays. So it's over on the corners and it's not on top of any of the pleats. I also make sure when I hang it on one of my bag hangers, like that one's on a bag hanger there, that the pole that it's hanging against is not pressing in a weird place. This bag overall will change structure over time if you're not more careful with it than you are with the Trevi. When you wear this as a crossbody bag, one of the first things I noticed about it is that it conforms to your body. It starts to press in and these ends will curve around. So the top of the bag will start to be a curve this way instead of straight across how it was made. That's why anytime I use this bag, when I take it off in the evening, I stuff it and I put it back storing it properly. And the way I store this properly is the same way I hang it by the two handles. I make sure these handles are not overlapping because it's Vachetta, the color's gonna change over time and if one is on top of the other, it's going to leave light marks because the Vachetta is not exposed to light and air completely evenly. Another thing that happens with these bags and the structure if they're not stored properly is again, gravity. It doesn't have a whole lot keeping it upright on its own, even when you have it stuffed. So these corners, you can see some of this happening on my bag, tend to dent in a little bit. I have been very careful to hang this bag because I knew that happens and to keep those corners stuffed. I also make sure when I'm hanging it that nothing is in the way of these little tabs pulling them out. In fact, I sometimes curl them in the other way because I don't want them to curl out on me. With this bag, I take the crossbody strap off and this strap is composed of two pieces of leather. I disconnect those and I lay them in front of the bag like this, not flat like that where it's not getting exposed to air and light on only one side, but upright like this where it's getting exposed everywhere. And then I put this one next to it, again, not touching, so I get that even exposure. Now let's look at the interiors of these two bags. And by the way, I stuff them with air paper, that plastic bubble stuff, not bubble wrap, but the bigger bubbles, and then I put charcoal packs in these. That's how I pack all of my bags. Charcoal packs will help absorb moisture and odor, and then the bubble paper is safe to put inside the bags to keep them stuffed and properly shaped. Let's look inside the Trevi. This bag is lined in a bright red Alcantara. Feels similar to a micro suede, 
You can see it's got one really giant opening there. And because of the way this bag is structured, the mouth of the bag is smaller than the interior. So it actually ends up holding a little less and being able to fit a little less than you might think just because of that opening. Also because these sides taper in, that makes it hold a little bit less than you might think as well. So you have that big opening and then you can see a couple pockets here. We have one slip pocket and then one little square pocket for a phone. And then that little thing is a D-ring. There's also this little leather tab sewn in that says Louis Vuitton Paris, and this bag is made in the USA. Now let's look at the interior of the Turenne. The Turenne is lined in a canvas, and it's kind of a red-brown color. I wouldn't call it burgundy, though it may look that way on the screen. It's more brown with a burgundy tint to it. Here you have a Vachetta label. It says Louis Vuitton Paris, and you have one, two, slip pockets. On the other side, you have one large slip pocket. There's also a D-ring right here, but otherwise it's one big open space. And you can see that the mouth on this bag is much more generous than the one on the Trevi. That allows you to fit more inside. But still keep in mind that you can probably get more in the Turenne than you can in the Trevi, but still keep in mind that with both of these you want to fit most of your things in the bulkier bottom parts of the bag, not so much in the top of the bag. Don't count on the top of the bag for space. Another thing to note about capacity and how much you can put in here, since both of these bags have pleats, they look a little bigger on the outside than they are on the inside. Because if you stuff them completely, you don't want to press on the pleats from the inside and damage them that way or misshape them that way. Also the lining on the Trevi, you can pull that lining out a little bit. And I found on my GM bag that the lining was a little smaller than the bag. So that made it fit a little less as well. I don't find that to be as true with my PM size bag. You can also pull out the lining on the Turen, not to detach it completely, of course, but you can at least turn the lining inside out to clean it. And you'll have the same issue here. You don't wanna stuff it too much because you don't wanna damage these pleats. So when you're looking at the side of the bag, you don't wanna think that the bag is this wide because that's where the outside of the pleats are. You wanna think of it more as like this wide. Another big consideration is the weight of these bags. This bag is all canvas with a little vachetta. It's pretty lightweight. This bag, however, is all canvas, but it has a heavier interior fabric. It has a heavier leather trim and more leather on it. Plus it has more substantial hardware and all of that adds up to a heavier bag. That was another reason that I got rid of my GM and didn't carry it that often because it was just too heavy. Keep in mind too, that since you have in a bend strap, the edges are gonna be a little sharper than they would be on a Vachetta strap, which would be softer. Now let's talk price. I mentioned the Trevi was originally around $2,400 retail, and that was the mid 2010s. So this was an expensive bag when it was new. However, they've not held their value all that well. On the pre-loved market, you can find them for between about $800 and $1,500, $1,600. Usually closer to around 1,000 to 14, when you're looking at condition on these pre-loved, check the pleats. You want those to be perfect. Check for scratches. I've seen quite a few that have scratches on the abend trim up here as well. Check for wear to the hardware. Check for corner wear. I've seen a lot of these with corner wear. The Turen MM retailed for about $1,600, quite a bit less for the Trevi, and this was released later than the Trevi. The Turen, however, has held its value very well. You can find them for a couple hundred dollars less, but mostly they're going to be around the same price that they retailed for when they were new. Some cost even more. And of course, a lot of that depends on the size that you're looking at and at the wear, particularly to the Vachetta. But in addition to the Vachetta condition, you want to look at the tabs. Are they curled out? Are you okay with that? The corners, are they indented? How much wear is there to the pointy part of the corners at the bottom. Those are things to consider with these bags. And these are very well-loved, well-used bags according to what I see on the pre-loved market. Most of them that I see have Vachetta that's pretty darkened from being used as an everyday bag because it is a fabulous everyday bag. If you're fortunate enough to come across one of the monogram Trevi bags or the Azure bags that were both special order, expect to pay quite a bit more for those. I saw an Azure one on Fashion File a while back that was over $2,500. Now, which of the two is my favorite? Which would I recommend over the other? It is the Turenne. The reason for that is this bag is lighter. It's not as fussy as the Trevi. It's easier to get in and out of. 
of. It has the crossbody strap. Of course, you can correct that with dress up your purse. It's just a really easy to use bag. It's comfortable. It's all the things that I want in a handbag. It is one of the perfect handbags in my collection. The Trevi, as much as I love it, I have to force myself to use it sometimes because it is still a bit heavy. It's still kind of bulky and it's still a bit of a pain to get in and out of. The structure of the interior also makes it hold a little less than the Turen. The smaller mouth makes it a little more difficult to get things in and out. So like I said, it's just a little fussier. So that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful if you're interested in either of these bags, especially if you're trying to decide between them. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you back here next time and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.